Hi, I'm Reverend Kathy, and it is my honor today to be the speaker, to bring you the message. So I want to begin with a little joke. There was uh, this old farm gal, and she was having a really, really, really hard time. So her husband had passed away and she was left with this dirt poor farm and the mortgage was due and the two sons that had been helping her uh, with the crops had run off and joined the circus. And so um, she was really struggling and uh, the preacher came by and he said, Sadie, how are you doing? And she said, well, preacher, I'm not doing very well. All of this has happened to me. And I, I just don't think I can take one more thing. And the preacher said to her, well, Sadie, you know that God doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. And she said, yes, I know, preacher. But sometimes I wish he didn't think so much of me. And isn't that like all of us? Sometimes we wish that the stuff that we struggle with isn't so hard. And that sometimes we wish that, that so much wasn't thought of us that we could handle all this. So today my talk is entitled, This Too Is God. So what does that mean? So I, I was thinking about the idea that When we struggle with something, when we have things that we struggle with, and when things are just not going as well as we think they should, or when we have something that comes up that really throws us for a loop, what do we do? So recently, I had something that really threw me for a loop. And I was told something and given some information that really upset me. And so what did I do? So the first thing I did was had a good cry. And I thought, you know, why, why this, you know, and just cried my eyes out for about five minutes. And I had gotten the news just before somebody was expected at my house for lunch. And I had some granddaughters that needed a ride somewhere and all of this was going on. And I thought, well, I can do a five minute cry, but I don't have any more time than that. So I went about and did the business that I had to do. And then I began to think about it and think, you know, this has happened to me before. What am I going to do about it? What do, what do I do about it? And so I remembered that the thing that I do about it is remember that everything that comes up for each one of us, this is a lesson. So right now, this is my lesson. Today, that's, the, that's my lesson. And in that lesson, I need to remember that this too is God. This is God presenting me with an opportunity to heal. And what am I healing from? I am healing from whatever comes up. So each time something comes up for me, I remember that I can heal from this and that this is God showing me something that needs to be healed in my life, in my life. Now, the things that need to be healed are not the same in everybody's life. We don't all have the same opportunities or challenges. We don't all have the same things come up for us. But it's a good thing to remember that instead of baying to the moon and crying forever to pull your straps up, pull up your bootstraps, suck it up and remember that this too is God. And when we remember that, we pull ourselves into a place where we can focus, 
where we can pay attention to what's really important. And we pay attention to what is my lesson here? What's my lesson today? This is my lesson today, okay? Am I gonna struggle with it? Am I gonna fail at it? No. The Lord only gives me opportunities to heal. If I learn the lesson, great. If I don't, that opportunity is coming up for me again. So I need to be prepared that if I don't get through it this time, I get another opportunity. So what's this that needs to be healed in my life? So we want to look at the words that we use. What are the words that we use? Words are really, really important. My words are very important. So in today's reading from Isaiah chapter 55, it says, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Think about that. My word is going to come back to me with the purpose that I sent it forth. So if my words are angry and negative, what's coming back to me? Anger and negativity. If my words are positive and hopeful, what's coming back to me? Positivity and hope. So we need to be really careful with the words that we use for our own lives, with the words that we use that we share with others. There are people who call me on a pretty regular basis that have nothing but complaints, that spend their time complaining. Is that the truth about them? No. We don't need negativity to be the truth about us. We need positivity. We need positive thoughts. So those positive thoughts go out and those positive thoughts come back. And that's what we want in our lives. So when we begin spewing words, we want to remember what are my words and how valuable are they to my life? If I am saying everything sucks and it's not fair and I am challenged and everybody else is not challenged the same way I am, why me? What's coming back to me? More of the same. But when I accept the challenges that come to me in my life and I say, this too is God, guess what? This too is God is held on to by the universe. And it comes back to me in blessings. It comes back to me in love. It comes back to me in grace. And we can all use a little more grace. That grace is important when we challenge big things. So the little things in our lives, oh well, we're kind of used to those. Big things, those we need to reevaluate. Those we need to look at, accept, and say, yeah, this too is God. This is God speaking to me and telling me what I need. This is God loving me enough to give me lessons that will make 
me better and stronger. This is me better and stronger. So in Matthew chapter 25, verse 35, he says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. Those words that are important to me will always be important to me. They will always be significant. So be careful with your words. Know that your words are powerful. You have all of the power you need within the word. If you're having trouble holding on to that idea of powerful words, speak to a practitioner. Ask somebody to hold that consciousness for you, to hold the idea that this too is God and that you can do better, you can be better, you can hold that con consciousness. So Ernest Holmes said, you can heal, but you must know that you can. Think about that. You must know that you can heal. You can heal, but you must know that you can. He said, healing is not creating a perfect idea or a perfect body. It is revealing an idea which is already perfect. Healing is not creating a perfect idea or a perfect body. It is revealing an idea which is already perfect. So when I say this to his God, it is revealing an idea that is already perfect. This idea that everything that we encounter is part of God's blessings for us. That these things that we think of as challenges, maybe they're not challenges. Maybe there are blessings in disguise. They are the things that bless us because when we tackle them and we handle them and we absorb them and then defeat them, we are blessed and we are absorbing those healing graces that come to us. So Ernest Holmes goes on, Healing is not a process. It is a revelation through the thought of the practitioner to the thought of the patient. I love that healing is not a process. It is a revelation through the thought of the practitioner to the thought of the patient. Don't you love that? So accept healing as yours and know that when you say this to as God, that the healing will be revealed, that the grace will be revealed, that whatever you need for healing will be revealed to you. It is just waiting for you to open your eyes and see it. It's not that it's not already there. It's that a lot of times we don't see what's already there because we are not looking for it. And when we shift what we're looking for, we begin to see new opportunities that are healing, that are blessing, that are grace, that are love, that are opportunities for us to do better, to be better, and to have a better life. So if you want something better in your life, know that this too is God, and that whatever opportunity comes up for you, you are blessed. You are absolutely blessed and you are full of grace. So we just absolutely know that 
these blessings belong to each of us. We know that each one of you is healed. Each one of you is filled with love and grace. Each one of you is God's precious child. You are God's precious child. You are the love that God exemplifies. You are it. So let's go within. Just close your eyes for a moment and let's know that God is everywhere. God is everywhere present. And right here, right now, God is operating perfectly in and through each of us. That God knows each of us by name. God holds us in the arms of divine grace always. And that as the divine holds us, the divine heals us. That love of the divine always enfolds us. And we are grateful for that. When we recognize that we are always being held by love and grace, we are so grateful. And we just say, thank you, God. Thank you for holding me. Thank you for knowing me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for blessing me. And so it is. Blessings. Amen. See you soon.